You gotta beat the man! This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes! Where is he? Cactus Jack! Your arms are just too short to box with God. Are you seriously gonna do the podcast like that? Hell yeah. I always lay down and do podcast. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is Sleepy Time Podcast. So we had story time with Brooksy, now we're gonna have sleepy time with Brooksy. Nine time stories. stories. Well, welcome to the Future Heels Podcast. <laughs> yep. It's a late one. There ain't shit to talk about. We're gonna find shit to talk about. You were recording? Uh, yeah. We might. Oh shit. We might <laughs> find stuff to talk about. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. I'm Brian Brian and Peacock. I am Jeremy the Coach Brooks. Both you fuckers need to talk up. Speak up. Talk Speak louder. Up. Fuck you, Coach. Fuck the revival. I haven't said that in a while. F T R R. Get it? Yep. 100%. All our listeners get it too. F T R R. So, anyways, <laughs> getting slightly on topic. Uh, there, I mean, there's honestly a few pretty interesting things to talk about. And you guys brought up one very important thing that we're going to talk about at the end of the show involving New Japan. And I'm pretty excited to talk about. Woo! But. Come on, have a little more in, in, uh, excitement. Enthusiasm. Wooshy waha! Oh! Ric Flair would be sad about that woo. Ooh. It would be. Well, I'm, I'm not Ric Flair, so. If I'm Ric Flair, I'm. Can you imagine Ric Flair coming to the ring going, woo? People be scared. Yeah, I think he's a ghost. <laughs> 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 Shut up, Undertaker. Uh. <laughs> All right, so to start things off, we've got like four or five things to really talk about. Um, one thing I find super interesting, and I'm going to start it off with a quote from Bailey, and then we're going to talk about viewership from Raw. So she was asked about how she feels about Ronda Rousey joining the company. We all know how Brooks feels about it. You hate it too, don't you? Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but bullcrap. I'm not gonna. I mean, we'll see how she does. I mean, she's not. We already know what, what, what her though. role is. Just to bring people in for WrestleMania. That's it. We ain't gonna see her no more after that. We'll see. So what Bailey the said. Bitch came with talk. That oh my god, that was horrendous. She fine was, as hell though. I bang her. A but million. She, ooh, I shouldn't have said that. That was a million times worse than Nia Jax. What was Nia Jax's thing? She just repeated something? That was when they was on SmackDown or something and she was just talking to Charlotte? That was, uh, that was funny. Well, I thought that was Tamina. It, it, I think it was, oh, it was Tamina. That was Tamina. Oh, okay. That was when the Women's Revolution about took a dump. <laughs> but yeah, that was like, that was kind of funny. Like, that was like, she messed up. Boy, Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> she dropped the ball on that promo. It's like she a foreign student in America reading an English book. <laughs> it really was. And the uh, the what is that? The my oh. line. I was waiting for her to be like my line or something. Like I said, if she was in Las Vegas, they would have ate her ass alive. I think you're right, and I think that's what we're gonna find out here in a second. So, when Bailey was asked about Ronda joining the company, how she feels about it, she said that she isn't taking my spot. She's not stopping me from achieving my dreams just because she is here. She has touched so many different people in the world of sports. People want to see Ronda Rousey because she is an attraction. She's 100% right. That's why she's in the WWE. She's not there to take up a spot. She's there to be an attraction. I think that's the right way of thinking about it. So does that mean she's going to get the title and only wrestle like two times a year? It's possible. It sucks, but it's very possible. Oh no. I think that's what we might see, because that's how it was with Brock. And now they're going to treat the... Are you huh? Are you serious? What? I'll be back. What's wrong? What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You guys are confusing me, so I'm... It doesn't uh. matter. We're... Something's happening, and I don't know what it is. Uh. That's nice. It's uh, Gaius' map. Oh, are we actually recording? Yeah, we're recording yet? now. Oh, uh, shit, okay. Well, that's Gaius' map. Can you two map. get on... Oh, okay. Who, who's is it? Gaius. Gaius? Uh, Gaius, what? Gaius. 
What the hell Shadow are we talking Crest. about? We're talking about wrestling. Oh, okay. Oh, obviously. I was on now that somehow we just started talking about LARP. Which if you want to hear us talk about, go listen to the Future Villains podcast. That's all I talk about. Except Dragon's Rage Tower, right there. What's Dragon's Rage Tower? I don't know. Just find go out. up to Georgia and find out. Oh, okay, yeah. Hopefully that'll happen soon. Alright, so... Yes, yeah, so Ronda Rousey, she is an attraction. She, the same thing might happen with uh, with her that it's happening with Brock. It would be unfortunate, but I think it's worked with Brock, unfortunately. So it might work with Ronda. Has it worked? That's, that's the thing. Viewership for Raw last week, despite Ronda debuting and the Elimination Chamber fall, viewership was down. Because it was stupid. Yeah, and that doesn't matter. People didn't know that. How do you know? Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? How do you know that they travelers? didn't know? So yeah, hour one had 3.4 million. When when was the Ronda part on? It must have been the end, right? Maybe I'd imagine so, but I don't know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they saved Rousey for the third hour. So the first hour was 3.4 million. Hour two was 3.24 million. Hour three was 2.88 million. That's a big drop. Because everybody went to bed. That's probably it too. But you would think Ronda Rousey, people would stay up for. Who gives a shit about her? Apparent. That's what I'm. The point I'm trying to make. WWE says everybody cares about her. No. Apparently not. Only Las Vegas does, because they want lots of money off. Yeah, no, that's what I'm. I'm tr- my point. I'm trying Nobody to make is I think you were on the money with that. Nobody cares about her. They are. They just. But just judging from elimination chamber, she's hot. Oh, she she's bitch. She's always been hot. I bang it. That's not what I mean. <laughs> oh, I mean, she's. Because I don't think she's hot, but Man, she's super popular. You, if you clean think. Your eyeballs. That girl fine as hell. So I got a question for you, real quick, to okay. get you off topic. Uh, <laughs> Uh, WWE NXT on Instagram posted a picture of uh, the tag title being held by someone in the Undisputed Era, but people can't fucking be time periods. But they use the hashtag NXT Indie. Okay. Like, NXT indie is guys. fairly indie. But the official, official WWE NXT uh, page using that I think is pretty interesting. Yeah. Because he's an NXT indie guy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just I mean, how interesting there. would it be if there was like an NXT indie versus NXT homegrown war? That'd be cool. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. I think they could do that in the main roster. They could. Heard because... about this chick? <gasps> Taylor Hendricks? You know, yes. Did you hear what happened with her? No. Uh, she posted uh, something about uh, at Alexa Bliss, you're holding my title. Oh my god! I guess a couple like weeks ago or something, she posted. It was just one post, and all it said was WWE. I, okay, hold on. Can I just say we're done with talking about Ronda Rousey? She's fucking whatever. Alexa Bliss versus Taylor Hendricks. Yes. Let me see that. Yes. A million husband. times. Yes. I need visual evidence. She is a badass. She is gorgeous. Um, God damn it, I can't remember Dang what her, her nickname is. That's, uh, whatever her name is. God, right now. good night of mercy on my soul. But then I guess Alexa Bliss posted a pretty funny picture. And says, I don't know who she is. <laughs> Alright, let me look at her pictures. So, Taylor Hendricks. She um, kind of looked like a white Sandra Banks. Books, did you is. used to watch TNA? Who, me? Yeah. <clears throat> Back when it was good. Because that's how you would know her. She was like AJ Lee. She that's was, her? She was like a nerdy. She was like a, a, a Leva Bates. Even. I don't remember uh, her. Now she's like a freaking vampire queen. Now she gained weight. Now, oh, what was... What? Kevin Thorne and what was her name? Melina? Is that who it was? Um, I don't remember. I hated her. God, I hated her. She kind of like a, a, a white version of Sasha Banks. Uh, okay. How? Because oh, she looks like Sasha Banks, but with a different skin tone. Uh, <laughs> Ariel. Thank you, Brian. Ariel <laughs> is Kevin Thorne's chick. Oh, that's what it was. I don't remember. Yeah, I just remember when she was her. hot. Nope. No, it's I don't like remember anything else Banks. about her. Kind of, hey, now that you say it, yeah. What? 
Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. Especially yeah, I guess picture. I can see it. But. So WWE has come to cloning women. Yep. So here's another NXT indie thing. Supposedly, uh, Keith Lee. Yes. And Walter, which I'm not familiar with Walter. Apparently that's someone we need to check out. Yeah. Were offered contracts. Keith but it's Lee? not true. What? Yeah. That is bullshit. This is exactly how I feel about that. By the way, I'm showing everyone a picture of Rick Sanchez flipping the double bird. Okay. That's exactly <laughs> how I feel about so, that. So, NXT and WWE are going out there and signing top-notch indie wrestlers. Yeah, they have. Oh, been. yeah. So, they're doing all this while the main roster, to me, is taking a dump. Mm-hmm. So. Hopefully... One day, and this, I don't think this is going to happen. Oh, this is what actually I was going to say a little bit ago. Um, guys like The Miz and Baron Corbin, they like to talk shit about the indie guys. I think you could 100% have a Survivor Series. Hell, we got two shows. Make one show the indie show and one show the Raw, the main, just a hat. Yeah, this makes sense, actually, now that I'm talking about it. Daniel Bryan runs SmackDown for the most part, right? So let Triple H or Kurt Angle even run Raw, which is how it is, correct? Kurt Angle, dude. Is on Raw. Yeah. So let Kurt Angle be the WWE guy, and Daniel Bryan start to draft more and more <laughs> indie guys to SmackDown. Your Kevin Owens, your Sami Zayn, your AJ Styles, your Nakamura, your Undisputed Era, all these indie guys. And all the while, Miz and Corbin are talking shit about your indie guys, getting pissed off about it. So Kurt... Gets them over to Raw. By the time we got to Survivor Series, we have Indy versus homegrown WWE guys. That would be awesome. Mm. No? I think it would be awesome, but too meta. You think so? Yeah. Because Corbin talks about these Indy pricks all the time. Yeah. You think it's too mm. meta? I think so. I think it might I, be I interesting. Mean, it's cool, but they would never do it. I don't think WWE more need more storylines like that because they know how to bomb it. Yeah, it would be good though. It'd be super I interesting. I ain't got no problem with it, but if it really happened, it wouldn't be like you said because it'd be dumb. I think they could also do it in NXT pretty easily. Oh, I found the next figure I'm getting. What's that? What the hell is that? Zombies Nakamura, but it's like the thriller jacket. Oh, that's cool. Oh shit! But I think you could easily do like a Velveteen Dream. Uh, making a team against Aleister Black. Have all indie guys. Yeah, apparently uh, Velveteen Dream is supposed to take on Ricochet for TakeOver. Holy crap. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. You know, I I love like Ricochet versus Will Ospreay matches, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But two extremely different styles is almost more exciting. Yeah. Because Velveteen Dream, betcha he's going to pull some shit, some Ricochet shit. It would be fun to watch. Because that, that's what he did with uh, Alistair. He yeah. He did some Alistair Black shit. That Ooh. match was so damn good. I'm a big Velveteen Dream fan now. I was after that, yeah. Um, and that's really, that's all it takes. It was like one match to prove you're a badass. Uh, yeah, kind of. I feel like that's what's happening with, uh, with AOP. I'm getting to be a little bit more and more of a fan of theirs. Um, no, I still think they're boring as hell. They're getting better, though. They're better in the ring. Yeah, they're, a little bit. They're scary. Who? AOP, Offers of Pain. They do damn stiff. I still love the idea of yeah. them and Samoa Joe being like a faction. That would be interesting. I, that I can get... see that happening, but it that just... That could be the thing they need for them to start traveling with Joe and Joe to take them under his wing. Teach them some shit. We have three Samoa Joes. <laughs> that would be sick. Yeah. Mm. That I don't ain't gonna happen though. Listen, man. I, we I can know, dream. Bro, That's what this bro, show is about. I, I know. No, the show is not realistic. about speculation. I fucking hate speculation. I'm being real. I yeah. I will, everything we say. I pray that it happens. But you know, in our lifespan, it's never gonna happen. Some of it has happened, though. We're going to get... And it hasn't been good. 
It's, NXT has been good. That's totally different. I ain't talking about NXT. Listen, I'm trying to think. Nakamura winning the Royal Rumble was good. Oscar winning the Royal Rumble was good. But we knew that was going to happen, though. No, we didn't. Yeah, I did. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. No, I it would had, disagree it, with it that. It happened. It was nobody else winning it. It had to happen. I really thought it was going to be Cena or Reigns. I told you it was going to happen, but that didn't happen. Then I uh, say it, say Jeremy, you were right. I don't remember. This is why we. Need Are to you start, serious? This honestly, this is why we need to start doing more <clears throat> predictions. Did, didn't I say Roman Reigns is going to win the Elimination Chamber? It's going to be Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. That I agree with. That that mm-hmm. I, I said that before the Raw Rumble. Because we remember we talking about that, I said okay. Roman Reigns is not going to win the Royal Rumble and Cena is not going to win because they want Cena versus The Undertaker, which is going to happen, I guarantee it, because they're too about to retire. <laughs> why Why did they have Cena come out and say that wasn't going to happen? What? He came out on SmackDown and Raw and said, that's not going to happen. I'm not facing The Undertaker. Because it's going to happen. That's why we... That's we <laughs> it up. such a stupid... Can we please stop doing that, though? They're not. They, they're stupid. They're right or so. And... and, and yeah, I told you they're not Roman Reigns is not going to Royal Rumble because they want him to win the Elimination Chamber. They're going on face Brock Lesnar. Yeah. I will say uh, a few days ago on SmackDown, after SmackDown was over, I had a moment of just rage. Because we were talking about in the last episode, Steam's going to figure out a way into the Nakamura just Styles match at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. So the headline that I saw was Cena, you know, puts himself into the D- WWE title match, AJ Styles, that's all I saw. And I freaked the fuck out. And I clicked on it, and Cena's in the title match fast lane. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm okay, that's okay. It's not okay, because he could win. He's not going to win. I think you're right. I think it's still going to be Styles versus Nakamura. The, if, if they change that matchup right there, they're fucking utterly stupid. Don't mess up something that can be fucking awesome. It will be. I think it will be. If they let They're going to steal the show. If they let them go. I think they will. I really do. I don't. I, I'm, I'm a bride on that one. No faith in it at all. They're not going to. The Vince ain't going to let them do whatever they want to do in that ring. Here's hoping. When is Fastlane? In a couple of days. A couple of days. <laughs> Two Probably weeks away. Two weeks? Yeah. Uh, March 11th. Next week. The next week. Yeah, it is. After our LARP event. Good thing it's not far. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's going to be a six pack challenge with uh, Corbin's, Ziggler, AJ, Cena, Owens, and Sammy. That should be a good match. That they won't almost... know, because they'll, they'll find a way to make it boring and mess it up. Is that, is that a uh, elimination match? I thought it was a battle royal. Six pack challenge. What the fuck is it? Stone Cold gonna be there too? Yep. Stone Cold. Stone Cold should referee every six pack challenge. Yeah. They're doing that. That should just be a thing. Did you watch that interview I posted on our our Facebook.com slash Future Villains? I watched a little bit of it. I fell asleep. The very good interview. Did you watch the thing I posted? Same thing. We're gonna get to that. Yeah, I gotta stop posting stuff me early in the day. No, this was short. It was like a minute 30. We're going to get to that. I, I, we did. What? No, I'm hurrying this along. I'm, I'm ready okay. for bed. Okay. Amen. So, yeah, we're going to get to that. But I will just say the interview I posted of Stone Cold on Larry King. It's an older interview. I don't know why it's just now getting circulated. Hmm. It's, it's not Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's just Steve Austin, which I really liked. Like, we get to see a little bit of that on his WWE network show but the Larry King obviously not being a wrestling guy just made it so much more of an interesting interview to me like I Steve Austin just seemed like a genuinely nice dude and I you see that a lot but that interview I think really brought it out he is a nice dude when he ain't drinking <laughs> okay hey stay fast that's Debra okay <laughs> Should, speaking of Debra Brock Lesnar <laughs> They're together now, right? No, that's Sable. My bad. Okay. <laughs> bad segue. Bad way. So. It's a so, segue with a flat tire. Boom. God, I just realized this is even worse than it is. 
Uh, Monday night, Brock didn't show to Monday Night Raw. They're making a whole storyline out of it with Roman. I feel like they're actually doing a good job of making Roman look like a babyface and actually trying to get him to be liked a little bit. Mostly because... I'm going to agree with this. I want Roman to win at WrestleMania just because I'm fucking tired of Brock. Like, Brock's done now, right? We've had this whole storyline of a part-timer. We're done, right? Probably not because he's probably going to go fight, make money, come back, make more money. Uh, I don't know. Probably. He's been doing that for the past damn near seven years. Has it been like two years that we've had Brock as like a part-timer champion? More than that. Feels like it, at least. I think it's been like two years. More than two, I think. But anyways, I'm totally okay with Roman winning the championship and keeping it for a while. Just so we have a champion to see. Because that's, like, that's a good storyline to have. But Brock didn't show up on Monday night. And I don't know if they're turning this into a storyline or if they really made him work a house show. But he wrestled a 35 second match against Kane. At a house show. I watched that match. Did you? That's about the most wrestling I've watched in a while. <laughs> but that that's so stupid. Suplex him like three or four times. The house shows are better than the main roster. The main shows. Yeah, someone actually timed it 35 seconds. Yep. It's Jesus, like, they did it in Chicago too. It's like three suplexes and an F5 and that was it. And Lesnar and Paul Heyman hightailed it out of there afterwards. Fans were not happy about it. <sighs> so this is... Honestly, I don't know why they didn't just do this on Raw. They didn't want to take up too much time with the wrestling. Either five seconds too long. <laughs> too much Raw. wrestling for Raw. <laughs> I don't know. Will this be more impactful on Raw? Or I think it might be more impactful just because it's at a house show. And everybody's tweeting about it, talking about it. Write news stories about it. We're talking about it on the podcast. This is what's going to happen. Lay it on me, Brooks. Brooks, you story time here, folks. Brock Lesnar, if they're going to keep him doing these house shows, it's going to circulate up to the main roster. You think he's going to do more than one? Yeah. Roman Reigns is going to go down to the house show while Brock Lesnar is fighting in the house show. They're going to get it on a Brock on a house show. Then the following Monday, they're going to show clips on it. Roman Reigns going to show up at uh, uh, Raw with a mouth talking trash. Brock Lesnar going to sneak up behind him. Suplex, 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 F5. He's going to haul ass out of there. It's going to be something like that. Try to build it up because this shit boring. So you'd think. I hope. You would think. You'd think that's what they would do. I think it might be interesting... I mean, what if Roman wins the belt and he becomes a part-timer? That might finally be the heel turn he needs. Who gives a fuck about that? Roman or just... Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. who cares? <laughs> I, I, mean, think, I think people are so burnt out over this shit. Like, who cares? So what would it take for them to make it interesting again? Nothing. Nothing? What would it take to make wrestling interesting again? Why don't we ask JR? <laughs> Nice segue. You're so, I was, I was trying to ask what would make WWE more interesting. But I guess this would. This is what we were talking about earlier, and I told you guys to shut up. Because we were <laughs> talking about it on a podcast. So, New Japan, and I didn't realize this, but the TV network that they are on, Access TV, is owned by billionaire Mark Cuban. And he is looking to invest more money into the pro wrestling show. He said, we're looking to expand in... It on Friday nights. By the way, this is from sportsillustrated.com. Uh, it was written in like December. Uh, we're looking to expand it on Friday nights uh, and we want to do more live as opposed to the delay and we're talking to them about special events. And uh, he said the WWE thinks that... Uh, do they think that Vince is threatened by their relationship? He said no, he thinks we're just a little shit. We're not a threat because of the language. That's the biggest challenge, the language. But if you're a purist for wrestling and you like the action, it's the best promotion by far. People here aren't going to connect as directly, but if you really love wrestling, then it's a no-brainer. I think he's right. I think there's going to be a large audience that really enjoys New Japan. Oh, yeah. It's like JR said, if you liked wrestling the way it used to be, you need to watch New Japan. 
Didn't I say something about this a long time ago? We've talked about this quite a few times, yeah. You remember what I was talking about? It's going to take somebody to bring New Japan over here. Yeah. Somebody with money. But it's like, it's New Japan or who else? Who else? I mean, ROH? Or, but it seems like ROH, every time they start doing something, something bad happens and they just kind of go back on their deal. Like, I feel like ROH has had their chance. TNA had their chance. Look here. This is what's going to happen. <clears throat> Mark Cuban is made of money. He is an American business phenomenon. He knows his ways around sports, everything that, that evolves around stuff like that. This man can get anything they want for New Japan to come to America and he may put on a good show. That's how successful, that's how well known he is. If New Japan want to have a big show, they could go to Dallas, Texas, where he, I don't know if he still on the map or not. So I was going to look up. And and uh, have a show right there in Dallas, Texas, a mainstream city in America, a popular city in America, and put on the baddest New Japan show ever. That's going to start a war. Everybody thought WCW versus Raw was a Monday Night War. This is going to be even bigger because that's just two different countries going at it. You got you got a WWE who releases good wrestlers. New Japan picks up a good wrestler. They make a mediocre wrestler a great wrestler. Oh, yeah. They coming. They are coming. He's still the owner. Is he still the owner? Yeah. I thought I read something where they let, they let him go. But He's in trouble about some podcasts. Yeah, he always, he, he got a mouth. He, yeah. he has a humongous mouth. Which I think will only help New Japan. And during the basketball season, excuse me, he probably got to spend like over $2 million every year because of his mouth. Jeez. But he loves his team. He respects his team. He'll go out and fight for his team. And I like that. So for him to join New Japan, mm-hmm. unless Vince got him on the payroll, he just doing that to screw him, it's on. It is on. If somebody that's a billionaire is going to help, an uh, American billionaire, I should say, help a foreign country, it, oh, come on, man. It's on. This it's is on. what we need. We need another war to make WWE interesting again, to make wrestling interesting again. And my question to y'all, if it happens, who side y'all? New Japan. Do to me. I was on their side of the old war. I'm on New Japan. It's gonna podcasts are gonna be interesting. Because look here. We all Bullet Club fans, right? Yeah. Who has you know, WWE got some Bullet Club members in it. New Japan got the majority of them. We can see Bullet Club versus Bullet Club. But well, they'll never work together. You don't think? No. No, it was Vince dies. Well, I think Triple H will. Because Triple H likes money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I don't see the members of the Bullet Club and WWE staying with the WWE that long. They would have to with their contracts. They probably got... If that happens, then... I guarantee WWE is going to make them renew their contracts for longer. Because, like, we said, uh, excuse me, man. I, like, y'all told me before, like, the, the tag that I keep, Gallows and Anderson. You know, you're talking about, oh, they, don't, they got enough money. They don't need, whatever. All the fuck the money and shit. It's all about having a title. They on freaking pre-shows. That's the best one of the best t- tag teams in the Absolutely. freaking wrestling today. And they doing pre-shows. Come on now, that's disrespectful. Yeah. You got, you know, what's it, Fandango and, and Tyler Breeze, police bullshit. They get more TV time than they do. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. This that's bullcrap. Imagine bull police are pretty good, though. It's stupid. <laughs> They're supposed to be stupid. Some of it has to be stupid. And it's, that's fucking retarded. You got two good wrestlers being put on like fucking retard. Then you got two more wrestlers. The freaking ascension with them. Yeah, it's all stupid. That's a shame. That's just wasted fucking talent for no reason. Well, that tag, SmackDown tag team division can be the best division in wrestling today, but it's not because they want everybody like fucking idiots. That's just my personal oh, opinion. Speaking of uh, wanting them to be whatever Brooks just said. Uh, did you see the uh, where Kenny Omega said he would never sign with WWE because he doesn't want to be a robot? Yeah. There's not many people I believe when they talk about I would never sign with just because we've had so many people say that. Mm-hmm. 
Kenny Omega might be the only person I really believe. Him and Cody Rhodes. Well, when I saw that, I went back and I found a picture of his entrance, his Terminator entrance. I was like, guys, uh, <laughs> Kenny is a robot. So. You're full of shit, Kenny. We know you are. <laughs> like, here's proof. But yeah, well, I think, why would he want to sign back with them? I think he has to, like, he, to me, from like what I've seen on Being the Elite and stuff, him, and I don't think the Young Bucks would ever go either. Um, him and the Young Bucks and Cody, they just, they're set. Like, they get, they're obviously paid well. I'm sure New Japan must fly them over there, right? And fly them home, like, for free. Probably. Um, if they don't stay over there. Yeah. No, they don't. They have family. Well, actually, I don't know what Kenny does. Some people I know the Young Bucks there. come back because they have family here. The young Bucks still wrap some ring on it, too. Yeah. So they have to come back. Cody, Cody, Cody come back, too, because he still wrestles with them, too. Yeah. So, yeah, they do. That, they go know, back and forth. If Ring of Honor let them wrestlers go to the New Japan back and forth, mm-hmm. that could be a connection right there. They do, yeah. They I'm talking about do. if it really happens. New Japan, New Ring New Japan Honor, has a very strong ally in ROH. Those two come together as one against WWE. They could have fucking Ronda Rousey. The bitch can't wrestle anyway. I Yeah, and like... Fuck Ronda, the entertainment part. I want to wrestle. I don't get sick of entertainment. I want wrestling. Here's the thing about like R- Ronda versus like New Japan... I'm really interested in what they're going to do with Ronda. I am. New Japan becoming a bigger deal, I am excited about. Like, <laughs> there's a difference. Like, I really have wrestling. The only time I look for right now in WWE is WrestleMania. Absolutely. Because I just want to see the fireworks. Because it's even not even that it's going to be a good show. I hope it's going to be a good show. It's going to be fun. WrestleMania is always fun. The only reason I like it because it's something that's not new. You no know, stupid name to it. It's been it's been there since the beginning. The main four: SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania. They're the only ones I look forward to. Okay. Who gives a fuck about a great balls of fire? Fast lanes <laughs> is so. Fast lanes should be something NASCAR should be doing. I look forward to Elimination Chamber. <sighs> Just because that and Hell in a Cell. It, Just because yeah, I like gimmick like, matches and TLC. Yeah, but it's not like see. I'm gonna go back to the old school way. Back then, the matches was phenomenal because the wrestlers actually went out there and put their bodies on the line. Now, they're scared to get scratched. That's why it just, it's not, it's... They need <laughs> and then to you stop see them. guys like Cesaro are the only ones doing crazy bumps. <laughs> you know, if, if you're not, I don't know. There's definitely a sense of like, you know, there used to be that whole thing of like anything could happen anytime. And that doesn't, I don't feel like that's a thing anymore. Except for like when AJ won the US Championship, right? At a house show? I yeah, think so. That and that's not program. even like, oh, that's the only reason that happened. That would never happen anywhere else. You're absolutely I right. T- about I showed that. you a picture about that. A lot of stuff happened that night. Yeah, well, a lot of stuff just happens in Madison Square Garden. What's wrong? The cars just flying by like a police chase or somebody. Well, yeah, stuff happens at Madison Square Garden because that's a very important place. Well, that's where the first, that's where everything yeah. basically started. But then, so nothing, or it's not true that anything can happen anytime. And like, what's the last time they really shocked us? I guess Nakamura winning Royal Rumble counts? Is that shocking? I think it's shocking. I haven't been shocked in a long time. I don't think it was shocking. Who else will fit, the, who else will be perfect enough to wrestle AJ Styles at WrestleMania? Finn Balor. But he's not on SmackDown. Okay. Fair enough. You know, if he was on SmackDown, yeah, that happened. And honestly, I would have expected, like, Randy Orton then. Randy Orton. Uh, Randy Orton. I'm just, like, given WWE's track record. Right, right. right I wasn't I, expecting just, Nakamura. Um, it's like, Randy, was Randy in the freaking Royal Rumble? He no, wasn't even there. I think so. No? No, he ain't there. I guess he wasn't. He, he he doing other stuff. Randy's about to retire too. Yeah, I think so. You know, it, his hair's even getting gray. No, he doesn't he, give a fuck. He, his life changed. He got his new wife. He's happy again. He's got off all the bad stuff. He's not jerking the back no more. He, you know, he's more in the churches and stuff like that. So he's a different man. So he's gonna get out of that business soon. And he's wait till he cashing in. Wait till his contract. Same yeah. with John Cena. 
John Cena want me more movies. Me and my morning money with him, making movies and taking bumps in the ring. Yeah. His heart out of it. They ain't gonna let him play, pass Ric Flair for championship. No, I mean, you don't think so? Hell no. They ain't, no. Rick, no. If that happens, I'll be done wrestling, period. You Who would re- you be okay with passing up Ric Flair? Nobody. Nobody? Wait, what are you talking about? Passing Ric Flair? Cena's John Cena. Is he Rick one championship away from winning? Yeah, he or? got 15, Ric Flair got 16. Yeah. Passing Ric Flair title. What about, what about matching him? Nope. No? Nope. I often respectfully disagree. He's just because he's, he's done so much. Who? Just Cena. He ain't done much as Ric Flair. Ric Flair basically made this shit the way it is. Eh, uh, yeah. Him and Dusty Rhodes basically know. freaking dug this shit off the ground and put it in our face. Yeah. What the fuck John Cena did? Wear different colors on the fucking ramp? Oh, the just, PG era come. He's he's the one who kept the company on his shoulders for so long. And it barely helped. Kept him going. No, but who gives a fuck about that though? Who read, who would you rather see? Ric Flair or John Cena? I guess Ric Flair. Yeah. Like a young Ric Flair. Who gets it who to this day Ric Flair would get a lot of pop than John Cena? I don't know about that. I know about that. Whoa. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. I don't know. I, I got to disagree. I think there could just there's so many kids now that watch. Nobody will give a shit about the kids. The kids give a shit about the kids, and the co- WWE gives a shit, shit about man. the kids. And the well, kids are the ones who get the parents to spend the money. That's what this era is about. You know why I say they don't give a shit about the kids? Because they get ready to get rid of John Cena. Yeah, that's why they need Roman to be. Who's the next teddy bear to come up in line to make everybody Roman. happy? Everybody happy. Fuck Roman, no. Fuck Roman, fuck a dash, yeti. I ain't, I wasn't even going that way, but no. Roman ain't for no fucking kids. I hope it's not fucking kids. Man, you, you, you nasty. Uh, we should probably stop this. Back it up, edit some out, and then stop. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> I ain't even say nothing right. about fucking kids. That's your nasty ass. I'll oh, get my belt. I got digging in my stomach. Yeah, oh, that hurt. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. That hurt. That hurt. That hurt. He hasn't stopped recording yet. Are you serious? <laughs> I haven't done the outro. Shit. You okay? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fudge. But I didn't say fudge. <laughs> That's a Christmas story. Either reference. way. <laughs> either way. You, you can line it up today. Pick four old school wrestlers and pick wrestlers from nine days and see who has the loudest pop. And I guarantee you all four of them are old school wrestlers yeah. still had the loudest pop. You know who does? Brian, Brian Man Peacock. You can find me on Instagram at BrianMan1138 or Twitter at BrianMan25. I think he's ending the show. <laughs> I'm ending the show. I agree with that. You can find me on Twitter at JaronBrooks42, Instagram, uh, JBrooks42, your mother's house. You can send me the address. <laughs> Cause I'm gone. You want to see pictures of him leaving your mother's house? Check yeah. his Instagram. And if you want to see me eating a sandwich at your mother's house, just come home. <laughs> that is a reference to the podcast that we did earlier, which you should check out. Future Villains podcast. Oh, yeah, that was the other one, wasn't it? Uh, whatever. Yeah, it was. Oh, crap, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> this is what happens when you record too much stuff. <laughs> and you're tired. Uh, so you, you can listen to that podcast. You can we're gonna be posting a new video very soon from the Falindor that Lion Door event we went to recently. Uh, you can check out a little sneak peek of that of uh, Don't Fuck with Korsgar. It's a great little video I put together. We need to show that to Brooks. Oh, yeah. Did you watch that yet? I don't know. Okay, it's really Why quick. Why is my voice cut? I don't know. Uh-huh. You can That's find awesome. that yeah. content on YouTube. Just look up YouTube dot com slash future villains you look up YouTube if you haven't heard of it. Um you can find all this content on iTunes, on Google, uh you can find me on Twitter at Best of the Realm, Facebook Best of the Realm Gaming, twitch.tv slash best of the realm, on YouTube Best of the Realm. What oh put it up on the TV. That's nah, alright. Okay. But there's a lot of text, that's why I say that. So no, at least turn it sideways right. for the poor guy. He's know. old. Bitch I ain't poor. <laughs> I am. I am too. <laughs> you're not you're not poor but you are old. I'm both. <laughs> we all are. 
All right, so you can also find this content <coughs> on futurevillains.com. That's F E W T R U E V I L L A I N S dot com. Brian, wake up. No. Brooks, say the thing. Fuck you, Joe Rogan. We go.